Now we've seen so far a few of the types of errors we can encounter in a program, a few of the different type of exceptions that can be thrown. Uh, we saw it when we were doing file input and output, when we saw uh, I.O. exceptions. We saw when we were doing, uh, when we were working with objects and references to those objects that we could get null pointer exceptions. Today we're going to talk about what happens if the user enters a number in an invalid format. So as an example, that might look like the user typing in 12R8 rather than 1258 by accident. We want to catch this error and do something about it. So clearly, whoever's implementing input methods has to detect and do something about number format errors, right? Like the ones we just saw. And the scanner methods next int and next double, they do that. So when format errors are found, these methods, they throw an exception that halts the program. And that, that bad format is detected but it's before the client code can actually react to the error. So at that point, it's too late. The program is halted. This may be okay during testing and debugging, but crashing with some weird error message is not really what we want a program to do if we're releasing it to the general public to use. Now, fortunately, there's a way for us to detect this, these kinds of exceptions and actually respond under the, the program's control so that the exception doesn't halt the program, so that it doesn't crash the program completely. What we do is we embed the call to any input method in a try-catch statement. Now, it sounds reasonable from the name, but there are two parts to a try-catch statement. There's a try and a catch. This is a sort of simplified version of that statement. We see we have the try, the statements inside the try. These are the things that might throw exceptions, and the catch statement. What are we specifically trying to catch, and what do we do if we catch an exception? Basic idea is this. We run everything that's happening in the try clause until one of them throws an exception. And if that happens, we essentially create an exception object that gets sent immediately to the catch clause. Then the code that's inside the catch clause gets run. Now, on the other hand, if we run through all the code in the try statement, but there are no exceptions thrown, uh, then we skip the whole catch clause. We don't even go into it. There's actually a tons of different kinds of specific exceptions, uh, but this one that we have right here uh, with exception E in the catch clause uh, that actually catches all of them. That, ha that handles all of them with no problem. Uh, at some point later, we'll go into a little bit more detail about specific exceptions and how we can, we can, uh, we can deal with those. Before we can actually get to the code that uses the try-catch, we have to review the thermometer class that it's going to use. So this, is a, this, this class defines a thermometer object. We can see it has a single instance variable, degrees Celsius. We can see it has a method set Celsius. Uh, we have set Fahrenheit, which takes a, a temperature in Fahrenheit and converts it to Celsius and then stores that in the instance variable. We can see we've got get Celsius, which is a method, it's just a getter, and uh, get Fahrenheit, which gets the Fahrenheit version of the temperature. Great. So we've got that under our belts. We can use it now. Great. So here we've got a program called convert with query. We can see everything is in this main method. Up at the top, we declare and instantiate some objects. We've made a, made a scanner object called reader that is going to take input from the keyboard. We've made a thermometer object using the class that we just defined on the last slide. And we've got a string. It uh, looks like it's a flag called do it again, which uh, we initialize with the value y. Okay, great. So now we say while do it again is lowercase y or uppercase y. So while we want to, uh, while we actually want to go through and convert a temperature, uh, now we enter our while true loop. This is sort of our, our input loop. Uh, we're going to keep doing this until we get a valid input. And here's how it's going to work. Inside the while true loop, we have our try catch statement. Now this is important because in the try statement, this is the part that could actually throw an exception. We're prompting the user and we're saying, okay, uh, get a double from the user, whatever you get, send it into the setter method of the thermometer object. So if we are able to get a valid double variable, so if we're able to get a valid double value, then this statement will run without throwing any kind of exception, any number format exception or anything like that, and we'll get to the break statement. That break will take us out of this while true loop, and we'll end up here at this line saying, okay, the equivalent in Celsius is this, and we ask the user if they want to do it again, get their answer, store it in, uh, in do it again, and check that once more to see if we want to go through it all one more time. But if we're on this line of code in the try statement, and uh, the user types in an invalid double value, well then, before we can even get to this break statement, a number format exception will get thrown, or really any exception that would get thrown would get caught here, we'd end up in the catch statement before we could have gotten to the break. And 
uh, we will print an error message, consume another new line, and we'll go back to the top of the while true loop and enter the try statement again, try the whole thing one more time. That essentially goes on until we get a valid input from the user. Key things are, if the input is invalid, we're going to head to the catch. Otherwise, we'll break out. If you wanted to, in the catch, right, the catch gets this exception object called E. In our case here, the type of exception that would be thrown would be a number format exception. So what we could do is we could actually say print exception and then E dot to string. And if we, if we send uh, this exception object to uh, string form and print it out, uh, often we can get some kind of meaningful message showing us what exception it was. That's it for today. Uh, we're going to get more practice with this in the future. Uh, the key things uh, to take away from today are what happens when the user is prompted for an int but types in something foolish and wrong? Uh, how can we use try catch statements to handle that? And uh, make sure that you can write a try catch statement uh, to loop until the user enters some kind of a well formed double value, just like we saw today.